Welcome to Side by Side today. We continue the journey through the epistle or the letter of Paul to the Romans. And today I want to begin with the impact that that epistle or that letter had on some other people. Augustine, AD 386. He was a two years professor of rhetoric at Milan. He sits weeping in the garden of a friend, Alypius almost persuaded to begin a new life, and yet lacking that final resolution to break with the old. As he sits there, he hears a child in a neighbouring house singing, Take up and read, take up and read, tole legi, tole legi. Well, and taking up the scroll which lay at his friend's feet, he let his eyes rest on the words, Not in rioting, drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. That's found in Romans 13. No further would I read, he says, nor had I any need. Instantly, at the end of this sentence, a clear light flooded my heart and all the darkness of doubt vanished away. What the church and the world owe to this influx of light which illuminated Augustine's mind as he read those words of Paul in Romans is something beyond our power to compute. So says F.F. Bruce, the theologian and the scholar. Well, as I read this little letter of Paul to the Romans and we share it together, I'm very conscious of the power that it has had on so many people before in their lives. And we want just today to think about the little introduction or the greeting. You and I might, in our letter, say, Dear John, Dear Anne, or my very dearest, or my darling, or it may be a little bit extended, but it's not much more than that. Paul is slightly more extensive in what he says. This letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life he was born into David's family line, and he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them, so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. Paul, of course, he has not uh, met many of these Christians. This is his first time to make an introduction. He needs to say things, perhaps in a way that otherwise he wouldn't if he had known them and had had lots more contact with them, as he has with some of the other churches at that time. So, some of the things we want to think about here. Some he knows, most he doesn't, but all he can assume correctly. If they are God's children, he can say things about them and he will tell them things about himself. Who are you? Well, you are the beloved people of God at Rome. They're not a denomination. Thankfully, there was no denomination. And this is an accurate description and a very liberating one, isn't it? Doesn't it help us sometimes just to really thin, trim things down to the core Who are we? We're not Presbyterians, we're not Baptists, we're not Methodists, we're not Anglicans, we're not Roman Catholics. We are people who are chosen by God. We are the the ones here that says we are God's children, beloved people of God. Beloved people of God. And that's a great description for you and I to hold on to. Remember that is who you are. First and foremost, yes, these other associations we have and their historical connections, they are what they are. But at the root of it all, let's never forget that that's who we are, beloved people of God. Who is he? He says, well, I am a bond servant, a slave of Christ Jesus, an apostle by divine vocation. That is a call, and you can read about that in Acts chapter 9, the story of how God spoke through his son to to Paul on the road to Damascus. He's set apart for the preaching of good news. I wonder if we were to write down who we are insofar as we relate to God, to his people and to this world, what would we say? Who am I in relation to God? Who am I in relation to the people around me? Who am I in relation to the people who love the Lord? That's a really good question. 
I just leave that question with you. And then what is his message? Well, he calls it God's good news. Isn't it great to hear that positive and affirming way in which what God cares to tell you and I is described? The good news. So what makes news good? Well, I suppose it depends on what we understand about our lives. If the things in my life that frighten me, threaten me, trouble me or reduce my joy or steal my peace can be solved, then I think I'd call that good news. Good news deals with the bad in our lives. Now, do I know what the bad is and how it's caused? Quite often we blame things outside ourselves, other people, other events, our background, our childhood, our parents. But then we soon discover, if we're really honest with ourselves, that that's not the source of the bad in my life. There's another source, and it's within my very nature. And Paul will address that in this this letter. Verses 2 to 6 are just all one sentence in the Greek language. So it's as though this is a whole complete. He's not adding little bits. It's all one thing. And he's telling the church that this good news is all about Jesus Christ. He does mention the Jewish background, the seed of David. But Jesus Christ is is more. He is the unique, appointed, or declared to be the Son of God. Shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. There are so many things that are raised in this little introduction or greeting. So many statements, phrases, words that, well, they they could make us stop for a little while and ask questions. But I think that they will all be answered in the rest of this letter. So Paul understands how everything in his life is all fitted together. He talks about his own life, that he he has been called. He has been drawn. He's an apostle chosen by God, sent out to preach the good news. And even that phrase, chosen by God, isn't it really encouraging to know how he can see that even the trials and all of the different things in his life had a place in the plan of God? This idea of being separated unto God is how it's translated sometimes. And when he's writing to another church, the churches of Galatia, he says, even before I was born, God chose me and called me. And it's really good to know that the story of his life is really God's writing. And it's also good for you and I to know that the story of our lives is also God's writing. And when we can begin to see our lives in this way, that God's hand has been on our lives, we can begin to, well, we can accept, we can begin to embrace, we can begin to rest, and I think we can also begin to to start to live better. Sometimes we're held, we are held back by our past, if only in our lives, you know, that sort of thing, if only I hadn't had that experience, or if only I hadn't you know, made that mistake, or if only I'd had a different set of parents, or if I'd been born at a different time, or if I had different gifts. No. All of those things are your story. And God takes and writes in them and through them something really special. And so there's a sense here in which Paul gives this idea that that this is such a privilege and a joy. Jesus is at the centre. Jesus is the content of his life. The good news is all about Jesus. Jesus is is the one that it all comes through. And Jesus is the one who we read at the end will receive all the honour and glory. Yes, so that it will bring glory to his name is how he finishes. Paul's whole ministry is to help people become people of faith, whose faith will be seen by their doing what God calls them to do. And our Christian faith has to be a doing faith as well, a following faith. And we do We obey because we trust in the one who has called us to this. Is there something that you are being called to do to express your faith? I love those words of Mary when she says to the servants at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, whatever he says to you, do it. Paul says here that he he has been sent out to call people to the obedience of faith or faith to be shown by obedience. Is there something that the Lord is saying to you? Well, all I would say is when you read in his word, 
Whatever he says to you, do it. Let it express your faith. And as we continue through this epistle, we'll discover the many, many motivations to help us to do that. So let's pray for a thrilling time over these next few weeks.